Now, back to Access Tech Live, the latest in tech and accessibility with Stephen Scott and Mark Aflalo. This is a whole new way of seeing. It's beautiful because you got the textures, you've got the raised and lowered areas, but it's still a picture. I've never felt anything like this before in my life. But what I'm feeling here and the differences in the skin texture, that feels a lot like the animal. People are going to go nuts for this. You think so? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so privileged to be here and experience this. Oh, man. This is my dream. Really? Oh, yeah. Welcome back to Access Tech Live. I'm Stephen Scott. Mark of Flalo is with me. Uh, that was Lawrence Gunther there, who hosts an AMI original podcast called Outdoors with Lawrence Gunther. Yeah, and he's the one who actually introduced me to this project, Stephen. I guess the embargo lifted, and he's like, I got to talk to Mark about this. And he sent me an email, <laughs> and I'm like, I got I to gotta learn more. And I, I said, Lawrence, and, and let's let's bring Lawrence on. Lawrence Gunther, obviously, th welcome to Access Tech Live. Uh, I, I shouldn't talk about you behind your back. That's extremely rude of me. But uh, <laughs> thank you so much for introducing us to this project, because not only did I want to get your perspective, obviously, going hands-on, but getting someone on from Canon to understand what goes on behind the scenes sometimes really helps kind of set the stage for it. So what was that experience like? You know, I, I had no idea what to expect. You know, they, they contacted me out of the blue. I thought it maybe was a prank. You never know, right, when you get an email like that. And I said, oh, tell me more. That was the, my three-word reply. They sent me a non-disclosure agreement and a ticket to London. So off I went. Still had no idea because they wanted to capture everything sort of on camera without giving too much away. I never met the photographer until the cameras were rolling. I never touched anything until the cameras were rolling. Honestly, I thought I was going to feel, you know, a lifelike sort of 3D model of a rhinoceros. That that was my thinking on this. So what was the experience? What did you actually feel when you got there? Well, it was nothing like that at all. First, they had me re read some Braille that they made using this printing technology. And I tell you, it was some of the nicest Braille I've ever read. It was a beautiful dome top Braille, no sharp edges, big, you know, chunky Braille, grade one. So that works for me. And then we switched over to the uh, picture. And the first thing I touched, I said, wow, I said, that is really rough. And Brent, the photographer, he said, he said, Lawrence, he said, that's exactly how the skin of a rhinoceros feels. And then I just went and moved my hand around. And I said, and I said, I see the guy with a gun. I said, was that the guy? Does that guy shoot the uh, rhinoceros? And he said, no, he's protecting him. There's three of them, rangers there that are paid to protect this last living male northern rhinoceros. And, uh, and, and uh, so just exploring that picture and the details you know, you talk about Easter eggs, Steve, and, and this picture had so many Easter eggs. I, you know, for half an hour, I kept finding Easter eggs. I go, oh, what's that? And what's that? Oh, look at that. What is this? You know, and it, it's just, it, you know, I used to be able to see when I was a kid, I, even though I was registered blind when I was eight, I had a fair bit of sight until I was in my early 20s, and I lost all my sight in my 40s. But this is almost like seeing as good as you can with your fingers. Now, Lawrence, you, you, you know, in the nature of your job, obviously, is talking about nature and animals. And there's a, there's a natural kind of obvious, let Lawrence, you know, feel the rhinoceros. What other type of experiences and images did they have on display that they let you feel? And what was that experience like? Were you able to decipher what it was? That was the only one I was able to touch. They had three other uh, uh, people with uh, vision loss and low vision blind uh, filming their videos, there was uh, I li I watched the videos. I don't know if they're all available now. I think they are, but there was yeah. a, a a woman there. She's pregnant uh, with low vision, and and they did an ultrasound, and then they took the picture of the ultrasound of her baby, and they used the technology to so she could feel the the face of her baby inside her stomach. Right, and that was powerful. Um, they had another uh, photographer who does you know, takes pictures of people with uh, disfigurements and makes them beautiful. And they had an influencer, uh, a, a blind influencer, feel that, and she was blown away. So uh, an Olympic athlete, one-armed swimmer, you know, just some amazing photographers, you know, providing, you know, just 
unique kinds of photographs. You would think, you know, it'd be like, you know, those seven wonders of the world or something like that. All right. No, no, this was, uh, this was, you know, each, each photographer and each picture was matched with the, um, with the, uh, the person who had the vision loss. So it was, uh, it was pretty powerful. Everyone was meeting for the first time. And this has a, a deeper meaning in some ways, right? Because we've all had the tactile experience in our lives. Someone's maybe mm. put in front of us an image or a graph, or I remember my first time ever getting hands-on with a tactile graph at school and thinking, wow, this is amazing. But the difference here is that this is actually showcasing not just the images being available in tactile form, but the technology that creates it. So in a way, what this is showing is, is that more and more technology like this is coming out, and Canon is obviously at the forefront of this here, but it's kind of showing what is possible and can be created for more people. This, this is interesting, isn't it? Because it kind of goes beyond just the typical exhibition where maybe a few people get the chance to experience it and that's it. This could be something that one day we print out ourselves in our own home and try for ourselves. Oh, for sure, Stephen. And, and the nice thing is, and I, you know, is that the, the pictures we're feeling are still high definition, beautiful color, original photographs, right? Like it, you look at them with your eyes, you almost wouldn't know there's this raised component to it. And the raised area is only two millimeters high at its highest point. And then wow. they use different, you know, textures and different levels of height to indicate the foreground, the background. And, you know, of course, if you take a picture of a landscape or something, there's a lot of information. So there's some editing that takes place to, you know, more isn't always, you know, more, right? Sometimes you have to do a little less to for the things you want to pop, for them to be able to pop onto your fingers without getting lost in a, in, in a just a, you know, um, a mirage of, of all sorts of, of tactile imagery that you can't really make sense of. So... The way I think, Steve, if, if you did the chat GPT-4 with your uh, Be My Eyes app, and then you heard a little description of the picture, and then you put your hands on it, you would have, you know, the objective description from the AI, and then you would have your own subjective interpretation as if you were actually seeing it, you know, to the best of your ability with your fingers. But it, it, you can really start to visualize it and you understand what people see when they're looking now Lawrence you know sometimes we go to product launches they let you leave with a product clearly that wasn't the case with this but <laughs> should you should you um should you get your hands on a printer like this do you find do you think you'd find uses for it they sent me the picture not the original one but a, a slightly smaller one so I have it what about, here the, on my what desk. about the printer though <laughs> no, no. I said, I said, don't pay me. Just give me a printer, and they laughed. They said, <laughs> the printers are are cost between two hundred fifty thousand and seven hundred fifty thousand Canadian. Oh, is wow. that it? And, okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So this this is something. But you know what? To me, I think about a guide dog, and I've been using guide dogs since nineteen eighty six, and I always think, wow, you know, people give so much money for blind people to have pets. You know, no, okay, it's guide dogs. Sorry, I didn't say the word pets, but, you know, face it, it's great to have a dog. I love having a dog. So to me, it's like just, hey, man, someone's paying me, someone's paying a huge amount of money for me to have a dog that I can just get around with. I think this is as fundamental as, as that, you know, that there needs to be a service where someone's going to print pictures or where we can send our digital images and say, here, here here's a picture of my new grandchild. I, here's a picture of my kids. Here's a Christmas yeah. picture. I, I want these on the, my desk, right? I, I want, you know, this is my favorite lake. I want a picture of my favorite lake. This is a satellite image of my, my favorite lake. I want a picture. This is my house, you know, and what does my house look like? Things like that. We should be able to s send these images in and, and get these prints out. And the nice thing is, because they're not 3D models, you're not going to have to erect, you know, thousands of feet of shelving in your <laughs> home space. <laughs> you know, you can make a photo album with this stuff, right? You can literally make a photo album and, and not clutter up your entire house with 3D models. That's so cool. Lawrence, thank you for taking, obviously, thank you for introducing us to this program in the first place. And thank yeah. you for coming on and telling us from your perspective what it was like. It was super interesting. And, and I can't wait to see this technology get a little bit more consumer friendly because we're going to, I think, get to the point where we will be able to send these type oh, yeah. of things off to get printed. 
Yeah, I, I agree. You know, look, when OCR came out in the mid 80s, it was $15,000, $20,000, right? And look, it's free now on your phone. So it, yeah, we'll get there. That's so true. That is Lawrence Gunther. You can subscribe to his podcast, Outdoors with Lawrence Gunther, wherever you get your podcasts. Of course, with new episodes dropping every two weeks with a new one just, just around the corner. Uh, your questions or your answers to our question of the day are coming up in just a moment. And that question is, what is the strangest thing you've captured on your home security cameras? We'll take a quick break and come back with those answers. This is Access Tech Live. There's more Access Tech Live to come. Get involved and have your say at Access Tech Live on social media. We'll be right back.